Good morning, everyone. Pastor Karen here on Saturday, May 2nd, 2020. We got through April and we'll get through May. Um, this last week, we have been walking through Romans 5, um, especially these early verses um, that Bishop Eaton had shared in her video last week. Um, and got me thinking and chewing and arguing and thinking and conversating with Paul. Um, and as Bishop or as uh, Pastor Stanton mentioned yesterday in his uh, musing, we had an opportunity to sit with Bishop Eaton on Thursday as pastors of our synod. And um, I was very heartened to hear her say that she was still chewing on Romans 5. I felt like, oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Um, but that Romans hasn't changed. I mean, it's been there. It's been the same for thousands of years, and um, but we have. And so what does Romans 5 mean for us in this time? And if you remember, um, in verses 1 and 2, Paul really grounds us in the reality of um, our salvation and that our salvation is one for us um, by Christ on the cross in his death and resurrection and that that is where everything starts from and that this death and resurrection that we have in Jesus the Christ changes how we are in the world um, and it grounds us in hope and faith and love um, I went a little over into Corinthians there but it's all Paul um, so from this grounding, then, um, we boast in the hope we have in Christ's salvation. Um, we boast in this God that we have. And then he says, moreover, we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And if you remember last week, last Saturday, hope does not disappoint is what got us all started on this. So Paul moves us into this Proverbs after grounding us in Christ's death and resurrection, moves us into this Proverbs of sorts that says, um, we boast in our suffering because suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope. And what I'm coming to realize, what I'm coming to know, um, is that this proverb describes the human story. I mean, this is our life, right? Suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. I mean, the reason that we, as we get older, are able to take things a little bit easier, are able to um, be a little more thoughtful about how we approach things, um, have hope, is because we've lived through other sufferings. We've lived through other things um, that have caused us to build up our endurance, our character, and our hope, that teach us the truths not only of ourselves, but of our God um, and of each other. And so Paul is here in the midst of this conversation that he's having with these two groups of people, Jews and Gentiles, who do not like each other very much, yet find each other both following Jesus and trying to figure out how to be in the same city um, at the same time, believing the same thing. He first grounds us in Christ's death, death and resurrection and then grounds us in the human story. Like, just because... I'm a person who lives in Wisconsin doesn't mean I'm any different in terms of my humanity from someone who lives in Africa or someone who lives in Russia or who lives in California, right? We're all human beings first and foremost. And through our story, through our humanness, we experience suffering. That's part of our life. We also, of course, experience joy. But what this does is grounds us first in what we have in common and builds our empathy and our love for one another. Because when I encounter suffering in the world, um, in people that I meet, I can have empathy with them because I too have experienced suffering. It may not be the same suffering, 
but it touches that human being part of me to the other person. And we see each other's humanity and we remind each other that we're not alone, even if our suffering isn't the exact same. And then what Paul will eventually get to is that moves us to help end suffering in the world. And all of this helps develop who we are, our character, our hope, our belief, our faith. And we boast in these things because of the love we have in God, which is given to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Paul tells us. Paul isn't being a know-it-all here, except that he is. But a know-it-all that says, I know you're suffering, and I'm here with you, and we're going to do this together, and we're going to boast together. And that is the good news that Paul shares with us. Let us pray. Holy God, I am so thankful for your scripture that calls me back to your heart, that opens my eyes to see the pain and suffering in this world and have it tap into my own knowing, my own hope, my own empathy and love um, that, so that I can work to help ease the suffering of others or simply to just walk with them. Be with all of us, dear God, as we make our way through this next month. Open our hearts with empathy and love so that we may all know that we are not alone in the midst of this suffering. It's in your son that we trust and that we pray. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you in church tomorrow.